Well, hello friends, Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Actually, I just finished doing a live stream because we have breaking news, of course, that the Cowboys have re-signed Leighton Van Der Esch on a one-year deal uh, that is $3 million. That's actually a good price for Leighton Van Der Esch. It's actually a good deal, and I'm sure that Stephen Jones is in the uh, in his office right now patting himself on the back because, you know, he, he could say, well, you know, we could have paid him the fifth-year option, you know, that other year. I mean, we could have picked up the fifth-year option, or we could have paid him a long-term deal, which would have cost us more money. But instead, we got him for $3 million, which in essence is a bargain compared to what you could have paid. And I don't have a problem with Van Der Esch coming back because right now you have Micah Parsons, who's probably going to have to play a lot of edge rusher since we lost Randy Gregory, and you did not make a play for um, Van Der, I mean, excuse me, uh, Von Miller. Now, maybe you end up getting DeMore Smith, uh, DeVore Smith, maybe, but more than likely you're going to need more than just Micah Parsons and Jabril Cox at linebacker, okay? So it's not a bad move. But if your plan is we're going to have Van Der Esch, he's going to be our starter, a guy who played about 57% of the snaps last year, that's our big move and our big play, then you have to look at the team as being short-sighted. And herein lies the problem for the Cowboys. I want to give an example of making good plays. Okay? The problem for the Cowboys, and, and I had a guy in here who kept, I'm not even going to say his name, but his whole thing, as we've gone through and deconstructed the team, we took a team that was not far away, that was close, a few plays and maybe a couple players away, and we have ended up losing some of the talent on the team and figured that we'll just be able to draft our way out of it. The problem with doing that is you're expecting players that you draft to come out like Micah Parsons immediately. You're relying on it to happen. And more times than not, it doesn't work out that way. That's why free agency is a way to supplement what you're doing. Here's what I want you to understand. We took something of value in Amari Cooper. They devalued him by basically letting you know that he's probably going to be cut. That we have issues with him right and so when you hear that it's like buying a new car and once you take it off the lot it's now a used car the value goes down in essence we just got a fifth round pick we traded six rounders which moved us up a little bit but in essence we got a fifth round I want you to understand this because listen carefully to what I'm going to explain to you the difference why other teams are better because the Green Bay Packers, understand this, the Green Bay Packers did not have the rights to Devontae Adams until they put a franchise tag on him. He was a free agent. They took a free agent. Now, granted, he's one of the best receivers in football. They took a free agent, didn't spend a dime on him, and they converted and made him into a first round and a second round draft pick. They literally took nothing because they didn't have a contract with him. They never spent a dime on him. And they turned him into a first and a second round draft pick. The Cowboys, we took a something of value. We devalued it. We traded it for next to nothing, and we're still paying $6 million of it. When you think of just spending $3 million to bring back Van Der Esch, when you think of the difference of, let's say, Randy Gregory's contract that we botched up, where his was going to be $13 million a year, you take that $13 million that you were going to pay to Randy Gregory, and if you had an additional $6 million that you weren't paying because of your mess up with Amari Cooper, and you put that together, that's $19 million. $19 million is well more than what Von Miller wanted. And I'm not saying that Von Miller, that, you, that, that, that he would be worth $17 million 
for us to pay. That's a little too much for me for a guy of his age. But I'm kind of pointing out the difference of what the Packers are going to be able to do. So the Packers have a hole. They've lost their wide receiver. That's a starter. But now they have two number one picks. They have two second round picks. They can go through. They can draft one of the top wide receivers in football. This is a deep draft. We can draft a guy that we're not going to have to pay $22 million or $27 million as his contract is. They allegedly offer the same contract. We can draft a wide receiver with our first pick in the draft to replace him and still have a first-round pick. The Cowboys, with what they did with Amari, and I'm not sure Amari, I mean, we, we know Amari's not Devontae Adams, but he's sure worth more than a fifth-round pick. He's sure worth a fifth-round pick. And see, when it becomes crunch time, these mistakes that you make, because the Cowboys have $25 million in, in dead money right now. That's $25 million that could be two or three outstanding players that could be getting you over the hump. And all we have done with Stephen Jones, because I know Stephen Jones right now, he feels good because it's all about me saving some money when he doesn't understand the big picture. Because, see, with Michael Gallup, right now they say, hey, we got Michael Gallup on a team-friendly deal. We got him back in the fold. That's great that you saved some money on him. But his injury is about an 8- to 10-month recovery window. If it's on the better side of eight months, that means he's not ready for training camp. And you can't expect somebody who, you know, finally gets cleared and say, oh, they're 100%. No, they're not 100%. In the same way, Dak Prescott wasn't ready to start the season either. And the, the ankle ended up leading to a multitude of other injuries. So you save some money on bringing back Michael Gallup. But you might have been better off actually taking that money on getting a free agent that was healthy and ready to go ahead and get working out all off season with the team. And this is the problem that is the Dallas Cowboys. Van Der Esch, yeah, three million, that's a good deal. He knows your system. He's a good player. He's a role player. But if that is the be all end all that, you know what, we're looking in the season, Van Der Esch, he's penciled in as a starter and we're not gonna try and get some better talent to go with them like Bobby Wagner then we got problems because our defense, you know, hey, Dan Quinn did great things. But now I don't know if you get J. Ron Curse done because you lowballed him. You've lost Randy Gregory right there. And you haven't done anything to address the run-stopping ability that the team has because you need some run stoppers. And now you may go into the season – with C.D. Lamb as your number one, Noah Brown as your number two, and who else? You also have to figure out, what am I going to do on the offensive line? Because Connor Williams and Lyle Collins are both gone. I got to get a guard. I really need a center. And are we sure that Tyron Smith's going to be able to hold up? That's a whole lot of holes that you're planning on filling with either value pickups and free agents, which are guys that there's a reason why people aren't paying them. They're not that good. You give up another Ty Naseki who, when, when Tyron Smith goes down, you find out he can't play. You, you got a draft pick in Connor McGovern, that guard that can't get to the second level. And then we have people who literally say, you know, if we had another quarterback, we'd be okay. If we just brought Pat Mahomes in here, or if we had Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers ain't one, it had three MVPs. He ain't gone to the Super Bowl in, what, 10 years? Russell Wilson, without the number one defense, he ain't done it. That's being short-sighted. So, that's where we are, guys. We are Cowboy fans. And we are literally living at the whim of a madman. Stephen Jones, got to get rid of him. You cannot allow him to, to run this team. All right, good people. Peace out.